I'm, as, as uh, Rob said, I'm Natalie Watley, co-founder of Changemaker 3D. Uh, to start off with a little bit about myself, I'm 35, I'm a mum of two fairly feral children. I was, uh, yeah, the, you know. <laughs> uh, I was born in South Yorkshire to a mining family and I later moved to Gloucester where I grew up in a pretty deprived area of the city. I knew from a pretty early age that if I was going to make any changes in my life it would be because I created them. And I think that humble upbringing has kept me grounded and has given me the resilience that I need to have survived what is the last 18 months of Changemaker 3D. So, bear with me because I'm juggling. How to win at innovation. Rob and I had a chat about this um, probably just over a month ago. And it, it kind of intrigued me because, to be honest, I'm not really sure we're fully winning. I think we're, you know, batting the hell out of it, for sure. But I wanted to definitely take this opportunity to come and actually open up and be quite authentic about what we're going through as a fairly new <coughs> business. I've only been around for just over two years. And we are family run. So it's my husband and I, and we have another shareholder um, and an advisory board, which I'll tell you a little bit more about. So I thought long and hard about this, and I thought, how to win? Well, really, it's about who dares wins. And I've got some notes here, because I want to make sure I get the word in right. But I want to share with you something additional to that motto, which you may all connect with the fairly well-known um, statement of the SAS and, and the military uh, motto of who dares wins. But what you may not be aware of is that they also have another motto that is not, less, not as well-known. And it's at the base of the regimental clock at Stirling Lines at the SES headquarters in Hereford. I don't know if any of you have ever been there. And it's a statement taken from a poem by James Elroy Flecker. And it reads, We are the pilgrim's master. We shall go. Always a little farther. So for me, to win at innovation is to absolutely be a pilgrim. To win at innovation is to go that little farther. Farther than your comfort zone, definitely farther than your competitors, and absolutely further than your own risk appetite. It is about pushing through every single knockback that you have, relentlessly bouncing back and galvanising that learning to move forward. It's about taking that energy, that passion and that drive that we as individuals have, whether we're inside a company or whether we're flying solo, to absolutely inspire others to come on that journey, to get behind the vision, to go a little further themselves. To win at innovation is to act. I'm, I'm sure we're going to hear quite a lot tonight about doing, and I'm an absolute doer. So whilst I believe in a plan, I think that you need to have movement as well. And not being afraid to tell people, we're doing it, we're going for it. We might fail, we'll absolutely get stressed and there'll be late nights and we'll wonder why the hell we're doing it. But we are acting. And in an industry of, of a time when there is a, such a need for change, it is only action that is going to enable us, whilst being pilgrims of our own passion, to win at innovation. It's not about blind faith. It's about having courage of your conviction. It's about having a purpose, knowing what we stand for, and making sure that you work relentlessly every day on that, as, as the poem really indicates. So over the next 10, 15 minutes, I'm gonna just talk really openly with you about me as a person in the business, the business itself. And, and the journey we're on. I make no apologies for being direct and authentic in doing so. So why did we start Changemaker 3D? Where did all this come from? Yes, it was driven by an, a, a love for 3D technology, for 3D construction. But actually, there is a social heartbeat that runs through everything we do as people and as a business, and that resonates around our partners and our clients. And it's this statement here that I just want to really focus on for a moment. One in seven people globally are homeless. One in seven. One million of those are here in the UK. Most, you know, go out on the streets tonight, you'll see them. We know they're here. Some of, some of us in this room may also have been homeless. 
And I don't just mean street homeless, it's, it's also important to recognise the hidden homelessness, the sofa surfing, the families who are in temporary and inappropriate accommodation. There is an issue. I don't think that's news to you, but it is certainly a call to action that hit myself and Luke, my husband, dead in the eye, just over 18 months ago when we were asked to speak at an Innovate event in Birmingham. And it was on, on the potential of 3D construction. So we felt very privileged to be invited along, you know, walked up thinking, yeah, great, we're gonna, you know, gonna share some insight. And we sat and we listened to the industry and the corporates talking about, you know, research and theories, and yes, maybe in 10 years, this might be a possibility. And we were a team of two, little startup. And I think they listened and probably patted us on the back a little bit, you know, nice, well done, crack on with your idea. And we walked out into the street, straight into the home of uh, the, 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 the path of someone who was sat homeless. And he was crying. So Luke sat down with him, had a fag, and said, you know, what's up, mate? What's going on? And he said, I really don't know where I'm going to be tonight. And so a couple of minutes went by, and we chatted with him, and we walked back to the car. Two things we said. If not us, who? If not when, now. And it was that moment that defined us getting back in that car, driving home, picking up to phone some of the people in this room and saying, listen, we're doing it and we're doing it now. And we don't know how. We certainly don't have the money and we certainly don't have, having never built anything, and I say that now, I'm not from a construction background, uh, but we were going to do it. Again, that statement probably will come as less of a surprise to you if you work in the industry than it will to, to me. The current construction model is not fit for purpose and it's not my job to say why but it is my job to be part of the solution it's change makers job <clears throat> it's our job we are change makers and i think the most important thing is to empower us as individuals we do not need to wait to be told to act so our vision is simple we want to <clears throat> excuse me we want to lead on 3D construction in the UK. Bold, yes. Ambitious, absolutely. Deliverable, well, we're still stood. After a hellish year last year, we are still here. We want to prove that 3D concrete printing is a viable solution to reducing homelessness. We also want to prove that it has many other applications in the industry that can deliver whole life value, can demonstrate innovation, and can absolutely deliver social value. But, as I said before, whilst Luke and I do have experience of running businesses in the past, we've never built anything. And we're not silly. We know you need to be credible. We know you need the skills. You know, a house literally does not just go up by itself, if only. So we worked some more on, OK, how are we going to do this, really? You know, we've, we've put ourselves out there now. And the first thing we decided was, what do we stand for? What are our core values? Because if we get those right, then the innovation and the partners and the change will shift around that. So for us, it was simple. We thought about that man in Birmingham. We thought about the statistic I've read to you just now. We thought about our own lived experience. And we decided that our core value was to enable society to rise. And that is defined by those four statements you see there reduce poverty, increase equality, sustain employment and environmental care. And when all of those aspects are taken care of, whether it's through having a safe and secure home, or whether it's as training young people how to use the 3D printers themselves, we are enabling society to rise. And that was our call to action. I think this picture for me really is um, certainly more relevant than it was 12 months ago when we, when we looked at the RISE values. And it's an increasing position that we all need to take. We're, citi we're global citizens, right? It's, this is our home. We know that. We understand what's happening. And again, we have that ability to make change, however small. So I'll talk to you a little bit about the tech as we go through. But the most important thing to us was that our innovation was doing good, or is doing good, in a way that is sustainable. So, we understand that the concrete that we're using is 60% more environmentally friendly. We know that there is less waste because you print on demand. 
we know that there is a thermal mass which has a potential for higher efficiency. And we understand that there are, are long-term abilities to recycle and reuse. So I think we started to pull all this together. And whilst we're doing this, there are many, many, many parallel processes running along. Uh, you know, we went and talked to industry. We sat down with um, you know, some of the leaders, really, thanks to introductions from over here and uh, said to them, you know, we're, we're doing this, what do you guys think? And, and they said, yeah, we're really interested, but, you know, maybe, maybe it'll happen in five years. And we said, that's okay, come back to us in five years, we'll, we'll be doing it well ahead by then. And you might think that's arrogant, and maybe to an extent you've, you've got to sort of, you've got to own that a little bit, because the moment you start saying, we're thinking of doing it, we're discussing doing it, we're researching it, people go, okay, fine, come back a bit later on. But when people, when you say, we are doing. It gives people a choice in that moment. Are you going to do it with us? Or are you going to follow us? So as I said, we built a team. And I'm abs I couldn't be prouder, to be honest, of the, the logos on that screen. It's a team across the industry from structural engineers with Constructure to Bailey Garner, who are award-winning construction consultancy, to Austin Wright, who's Mark over here and is on our advisory board, to our local LEP and Homes England. We've also got on there that we're unlimited award winners because the only funding that we've had to date is through unlimited for our social cause. We've also got on there Cybe, who are a European partner of ours. They provide the technology um, and which we're adopting and bringing to the UK. They are global leaders as confirmed by KPMG. This is happening, it's happening outside the UK, it's happening globally, the change and the momentum is there. So everybody on that board has predominantly worked at risk for a year with us because they believe in what it is we're trying to achieve. They have put tens of thousands of pounds of their own time and resource through their teams into helping us understand what does this house look like and, and how do we need to make it robust for UK regulation, for warranty, for process, for, I'm gonna say the word planning and then I'm gonna shiver and just move on and then pull all of that together for us so that actually we do have that product. So the technology itself, um, there's a lot of science behind it and I'm not gonna go into all the detail, but essentially it offers on-site and off-site printing. There are a lot of USPs about it. it. It prints, you know, I've seen it print a two metre by two metre wall in 20 minutes. It, it's dry in five minutes, load bearing in an hour, and it has the same strength at 20, of, of Portland cement at 28 days, it has that in 24 hours. This is cool stuff. This is stuff that is making the industry sit up and be intrigued, I think is a fair word. So this is the basis of which our, our business is evolving. We're using this technology to be able to go out there and construct homes differently. So we overcame quite a lot of challenges last year and we also had a lot of blockages. The first challenge was people saying, well, you've got to get land. You've got to go out and, you know, who's going to give you land to build on this? So we asked around and we leveraged the relationships of the team on the previous slide. And actually, we've been given the opportunity to build on, on a client's land. Okay, great, tip number one. Clients, we've had some ups and downs. I think last year we had local authorities come into us who, again, wanted to take on the innovation, but actually went on the journey and, and for a variety of reasons, mostly around risk and their legal teams and you know, public spend and all that sort of stuff, they decided they couldn't be first to adopt. Fine, we understand that. But we have got housing association clients who, who do want to push forward. Warranty was the next challenge that everybody said, well, these houses have got to be you know, mortgageable and all the rest of it, and you know, how are we going to be able to borrow against them? So we thought, OK, next challenge. And we spoke to NHBC, uh, Head of Innovation, who said, brilliant, cracking, let's work on this together. I don't have an answer for you, but I know I've got a team that can help. And so we're working through that process at the moment. And funding has been the biggest challenge known to man or woman or you know, person over the last 12 months. We have approached banks, flat no. We've approached 
venture capitalists who've said, bloody hell guys, you could be stratospheric. Come back to me when you've proved it, de-risked it, and then I'll give you a load of money. All right, thanks. I'll put that in strategy. We even had a, a CEO of a social business, social investment business, tell us, well, guys, you know, you've just got to kiss a lot of frogs. Okay, I'll put that in the business plan as well. Ultimately, there were a lot of no's because people are fearful. And that's the learning that I just want to really kind of spend a moment on. The risk appetite in the UK for being a startup with a disruptive innovation, which in theory is the perfect storm for genuine innovation, is too risky. People have a fear of their own accountability within their company, to their shareholders, to their lawyers. I understand that. But if we don't find a space in which we can exist and grow, we will never win at innovation. And more importantly, we will keep walking out onto the street to people who are sat there crying. And we as a society have enough skills, resource and humanity to stop that. Process. So I totally believe in process. I think it's the most important thing for quality assurance. It is equally the quickest thing to kill innovation. And so we have gently navigated our way through a process which we don't understand. And by that, I think it's a good thing because we are not second guessing what should happen. Oh, well, you do your drawings, then you do this, then the QS gets involved and so on and so on. We've asked why at every stage. Well, why does the QS do that? Why do planning do this? And it has disrupted in a way that really people's heads have either popped off or they've loved it. You know, it really is divisive. But accountability and fear are the two biggest ones that I really hope into 2020 we can move through with the right stakeholders and, and the right partners on board. People need to be, I love what the guy was saying, sorry I didn't catch your name first, but Matt, but you were talking about people internally being empowered and, and that's what we're seeing there, give people the accountability to say I'm going to run with this, I'm going to run with these crazy guys that are going to 3D print something because it might fall over but bloody hell it might actually also work. And it's that, it's, it's that question of what if that we need to support people and, and you, whatever your role is in, in your organisation or if you're self-employed, to be able to work through that, to get past the fear of the unknown of the innovation. So, to conclude, change starts with action. It sounds an obvious statement, but actually how often do we do something. Innovation is driven by pilgrims and that doesn't matter whether you're part of a big team, a multinational or out there on your own. We are all have the ability to be pilgrims, to be committed to our own passionate cause. And finally, I want to leave with you that together, if we really do take on how to win at innovation, if we really do shape the society by harnessing the power of technology, by integrated it into a, into a sector which has the capability and the need to change, then together we rise. Thank you.